NHL regular season recap, night 126, just five games last night. Um, they kind of got better as they went along. We got started with the Sabres and Canadians, by far not the most exciting matchup. But it was actually a decent game. Arbor Jack I opens the scoring in the first, and then a lot of goals in the second. Zemgus Gergensen's Struble, Skinner, and Tuck all scoring. Uh, Skinner and Tuck's goals coming on the power play and shorthanded respectively, and that is actually all the goals we get for this game. It's a 3-2 final for Buffalo. UPL played a really solid game tonight. He goes 29 for 31, a 935 save percentage. He's actually been playing pretty well lately. He's definitely become the guy for them over the course of this season. For the Canadians, Sam Montembeau and Net goes 20 for 23. Not his best performance this year. He's also generally been pretty good, but just not quite able to get it done tonight. It's a 3-2 win for the Sabres over the Habs. The Flyers taking on the Blackhawks, and I don't want to say this was the most exciting game, but definitely a big one for the Flyers. They're still sitting in a playoff spot, and this is the kind of game that a team that maybe doesn't have playoff expectations, or at least didn't heading into the year, absolutely has to win from the position the Flyers are in, and they're able to get it done. It's not the most exciting game. Goals from just Sanheim, Konechny, and Hathaway in the first, and then the two in the second. Colin Blackwell with a pretty nice goal in the first period that tied it at one before Konechny, of course, broke that tie in the second period, but... All things considered, not really a bad game at all from Philly. They limit the Flyers to just 22 shots. Sam Harrison stops 21 of those 22, while Arvid Soderblom goes 30 for 33. Neither goalie had a bad game, obviously. Uh, the Blackhawks just not really able to generate much offense, thanks to the style of hockey that the Flyers play. And the guys in orange are able to get the win, as they probably should against this Blackhawks team. 3 ones the final. They remain in third in the Metro. The Leafs visiting Arizona, and the scriptwriters hit the nail on the head perfectly with this one. Austin Matthews, 49 goals heading into this game in his hometown. He doesn't open the scoring, but he inevitably gets his 50th with the Leafs' second goal of the game just five minutes into the first period on the power play. Nylander would add a third with about four and a half minutes to go in the first, and just like that, it's 3 nothing Leafs. But in typical Leafs fashion in the second, they give up two pretty quick ones in the first five and a half minutes, and just like that, it's 3-2. to two. But who else would score to make a 4-2 but Austin Matthews once again, his 51st goal of the year. Dylan Gunther would score with seven seconds left in the second frame on the power play to once again bring us within one. But then in the third, it's Nylander and Tavares both scoring a pretty big night in general from the core four for Toronto. Uh, and they're able to get it done over a struggling Coyotes team at six to three. Ilya Samsonov goes 23 for 26. Not the best game statistically, but enough to get the job done for certain because Karel Vimelka goes just 30 for 36 for an 833 save percentage. He's been struggling quite a bit lately and that kind of continues tonight. The Coyotes as a whole, of course, have been struggling. That's been well documented over the last two weeks. And that just continues tonight against a powerhouse Leafs team that's just been rolling over really everyone they play over the last two weeks or so. 6-3 is the final here. Matthews is the first to 50 goals. The Oilers hosting the Bruins in what was a very, very high-scoring affair. This one did not disappoint two of the better teams in the league. I'm not going to say hottest because both of them have been kind of struggling lately, but uh, it was a banger of a game. TNT had this one. I'm kind of glad they did. In the first, it's Geeky and Fogel that trade goals 1-1 one, one after one, and then in the second, the Bruins completely take over. Marchand, Frederick, and DeBrusque all score in the first 14 minutes of the frame, and it's 4-1 before the Oilers really have a chance to react. Warren Fogel would get his second of the game 15-27 uh, into the second period to make it a two-goal gap headed to the third. And then things kind of change up in the third. It's Yanmark and Corey Perry both scoring. Not the two guys you expect to be producing on Edmonton, but they get it done and we're tied at four about halfway through the period. Pasternak scores 12-41 into the third to once again make it a one-goal lead for the Bees. But Zach Hyman, less than a minute later, ties it right back up from McDavid and Ekholm. And we have a 5-5 game that does head to overtime. In the overtime, some pretty good back-and-forth action, but Charlie McAvoy with the eventual game-winning goal, and it's a 6-5 overtime win for the Bruins over the Oilers. Of course, 11 goals in a game, neither goalie's numbers are going to be all that pretty, and that was definitely the case tonight. Swayman was the better of the two. He goes 37 for 42 and 881, while Stu Skinner goes 30 for 36, identical numbers to Karel Vimelka, and 833 save percentage in the loss. Um, I would love to see this as a Stanley Cup final, man. I mean, these two teams just back and forth the entire night. Uh, it would be a really, really entertaining, hopefully seven game series. But in this edition of it, the Bruins get it done 6-5 in OT. The last game of the night, the Blue Jackets visiting the Ducks in kind of a battle of the basement. This game really had no business being entertaining, but 
it kind of was. Three goals in the first from the Blue Jackets. Wierenski with two and Gaudreau with one that make it 3 nothing after one. Sean Corrali would add another at the beginning of the second to make it 4 nothing. Pretty early on, the game kind of looks over. But in the second period, some drama. Elvis Merzlikens has to come in. He gives up two goals on two shots. Daniil Tarasov comes back in. He also gives up two goals in this period, despite the Ducks only getting seven shots. And before the second frame wraps up, we go from 4 nothing Blue Jackets to 4-4 tied. Goals from the Ducks come in from Terry, two from McTavish, and then one from Alex Kalorn. In the third, though, despite only getting seven shots of their own, the Blue Jackets wake back up, at least from the standpoint of scoring chances. It's Yegor Chinnikov, Sean Corrali, and then Boone Jenner with the shorthanded empty net goal with just about 30 seconds to go that seals the deal. And in wild fashion, it's a 7-4 win for the Blue Jackets. Tarasov, in the time he played, goes 27 for 29. I'm still trying to figure out what happened to him that caused him to leave briefly, obviously. Whereas Likens was forced to come in, gives up the two goals, and then Tarasov looks to have come back in and finished out the game. For John Gibson, not a great night. 20 of 26, a 769 save percentage. Get this man out of Anaheim ASAP because it's not getting any better. Uh, it's a 7-4 final for the Blue Jackets once again, and that's it. For NHL regular season recap, night 126, a surprisingly good one despite only having five games on the docket. But tonight we have a lot more, looks like 11 games. So, <clears throat> wow, excuse me. We'll talk to you guys later.